In order for me to accurately explain what prompted me to lose weight, I have to share with you why I gained weight in the first place. You see, I wasn't overweight as a kid. I never was. For me, I was pretty athletic. I was in pretty good shape. And a lot of people look at that and they say, well, you don't truly know what it was like to be overweight if you didn't grow up that way, being ridiculed all the time and this and that. Well, let me level with you on what happened in the first place. I was always the skinny kid. And because I was the skinny kid, I was made fun of for that. I was always made fun of for my body type, okay? Whether I was a runner, whether I was a lifter, whatever. I was either the skinny guy or the fat guy, right? Now, the interesting thing is that I wanted to fix that. So what did I do? I started to lift weights. And what did I do along with that? I started to eat a lot of food. But here's something that you can relate to. I'm sure you can if you're watching this video. I was a very one-track mind person. When I set my mind to building muscle and gaining weight, I went all the way, okay? Now, what happened there is I established habits. I established traits. And then what happened? I got thrown into the real world, career, corporate life, okay, working in the healthcare setting, high pressure, managing thousands of physicians. It was a lot of pressure. Suddenly, money became my focus. Career became my focus. And because I is exactly that person that I described as a one-track minded focused person, guess what? I focused on that. And that made it so that all the eating habits that I had established in an effort to gain weight stuck with me, except they weren't good habits. They were just contrast from what I used to be before, anything I could do to gain weight. The point is here, jumping back to physiology for just a second, I damaged my metabolism and I damaged my metabolism so darn good that it took someone that was probably born to be a relatively thin person and made me fat, made me overweight. And it took me a long time to get my cells functioning at a normal level again. Now I don't have as much of an issue keeping weight off, but there was a period of time where it was a struggle where I would look at a piece of food and I'd feel like it would go right to my midsection. So what prompted me to lose weight? Well, let's take a look at what balance looks like for just a second, because balance to me is total nonsense. There's no such thing as finding real balance, okay? If you are a driven person, you will always be hyper-focused at one piece of your life at a time. The trick is making sure that you can compartmentalize. Now, let me give you an example. If I'm focused on business, I'm going to be focused on business 100% at that moment in time. It is the absolute definition of mindfulness. That is what I'm focused on. Okay, I'm not thinking about what I'm eating. I'm not thinking about home. I'm thinking about what I'm doing that very second. When I'm home with my family, it's the same thing. I, just like you, will fall victim to distraction, but it's your job and my job to get, that self, get ourselves course corrected. Okay. So what happened? What prompted me to ultimately lose weight when you focus in on that balance? Well, it was the fact that I had lost that small balance, right? I lost the ability to focus and that frustrated me more than anything. Okay, so I didn't look in the mirror one day and say, oh man, I'm fat. As a matter of fact, I didn't even focus on it. Okay, what I did realize was how I had zero cognitive ability anymore. I was foggy, I felt overwhelmed, and something needed to change. But what hit me was when a good mentor, a good business coach of mine said, you are not doing a good job at setting boundaries anymore. Didn't mention a single thing about my weight. Okay, said, you're not doing a good job of setting boundaries anymore. You're no longer focused on uh, one thing at a time. You're thinking about it all. And that would mean eating too. Okay, so the reality of that means that my life had just become a mix mash of just everything. And which came first, the chicken or the egg? Which came first, bad eating habits that made me foggy, that made me lose that mindfulness? It could be the case. Or just a lack of focus in the right areas and focusing on career and focusing on making money and focusing on business. Probably a mixture of both, okay? But then we get into the other side of things. As my attention comes to my body because of this revelation, if you wanna call it that, so what prompted me, for lack of a better term, to lose weight was recognizing that I didn't have boundaries anymore, recognizing that I didn't have the focus, but then once that was in my head that I didn't have that, it made me able to see what exactly was happening with my body. And I looked in the mirror and I decided that that is not what I wanted to be anymore. 
Okay, so what prompted me was just being a better person in general. It was the cascade of seeing how much I had let myself go just after the fact. So I used to go to drive throughs and I used to sit in the parking lot and just eat whatever I would want, okay? It didn't bother me until I started thinking about how other people would see me, okay? I've always been a people pleaser. It's someone that I am and it probably reflects in my videos. And it realized, or I realized that in the business situation, I wasn't respected anymore. I went from being someone that was in relatively decent shape to someone that just wasn't respected. I was just a one trick pony, good at what I was doing, and I didn't command respect with my, my demeanor. I didn't command respect with what I put in my body. Even if I thought someone else didn't care, at a subconscious level, I think they did care because I wasn't taking care of myself. And then I look at my wife, I look at my family, and how could I ever be the kind of person that they need when I can't even take care of myself? So there's a reason, and I've said this before, that people use the term, or the, the, I guess the saying, you have to put your oxygen mask on yourself first before you can help other people, okay? I was focused on making money, and I told myself that I was making money for my family. I told myself that that was the goal, that if I could just make money, I was providing for my family, and it was a total facade. And I can especially speak to people that are in business, you know this exact feeling. Okay, you trick yourself into thinking that you're doing something for one specific reason. So what does that mean? It means I eat whatever I want because my goal is helping other people. My goal is helping my family. When in reality, no. I was just chasing that because it was what I was focused on and it was too easy to continue down that path and it was too difficult to carve into another path at all. Chasing that dopamine response of whatever it was, money, food, and let me just level with a lot of different people here, okay? I know you specifically are probably feeling this, but there might be some people that are not, okay? You don't have to be chasing money or owning a business or anything like that to have these feelings, okay? It could be anything. It could be your cell phone. It could be video games. It could, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So then when I look in the mirror and I see myself and I see what I've become and I realize I don't want to be this anymore, it's a lot easier to take that step. And there's one thing that people forget all the time, and I've talked about this in videos too, and it's called anger drive. There is nothing wrong with anger drive. What anger drive is, is being frustrated with yourself to a point where it actually acts as a catalyst to move you forward. Does that become your life? Does that become who you are? No way, but it's okay for it to be a catalyst. And don't let society tell you that it's not okay to be angry with yourself. Anger is an emotion. It's what you do with that emotion that matters. Do you let it fester and do you let it manifest into all these different things and illness? No, but it's okay to be angry with yourself for making bad decisions. You just have to bring yourself back to the present. The emotional transformation that you go through with any kind of weight loss is bigger than anything. Okay, and those that have lost weight, you know this. Your body changes, but what happens mentally is infinitely bigger and carries over into so many different aspects of your life. Okay, I continue to grow and continue to thrive in different ways as a result of what I gained through that mental transformation. Okay? It's a, meth it's, a, it's a matter of endurance, right? You, you don't just decide to lose weight one day and embark on a diet and stick with it and change your body overnight. It takes a lot of mental endurance. Now, in addition to the physiological, biological, biochemical changes that occur when you do that, you have mental barriers that you overcome. And it's the only way, in my honest opinion, that you can tackle the subconscious in such a way to reframe who you are as a person. You wanna change who you are as a person, change who you are on the exterior, and it will follow. Because you will manifest your own reality simply by looking in the mirror and seeing something different than you have been for the last five, seven, 10, 15, 20, 25 years. I do wanna pause for one second and just say a big thank you to a brand out there called Noosh Foods, okay? Now, yes, this is a sponsored mention here, but the reason that I'm bringing them up is because they have always supported me when it comes down to the transformation type content that I do. Okay, so when it comes down to my mental transformation, when it comes down to the addiction to sugar, the addiction to food, they have always supported me in getting this message out. So even as a matter of just giving them some solid props for what they do, 
I highly recommend you check them out down below. Okay, they have low carb cakes that are keto friendly. They also have cookies that are keto friendly. Highly recommend you check them out down below. Just a good hearted brand that supports the emotional transformation, the mental transformation, and the physical transformation of all the wonderful people that are embarking on this together. So highly, highly recommend you check them out. Big, big thank you to Noosh for making this video possible and for helping support this channel and especially for helping elevate me to be able to get this message out there and hopefully help a lot of people. Okay, so let's jump back to what it looks like for a few different situations in terms of catalysts to lose weight. Okay, I've kind of divided it into three groups. Okay, the first group is the standard one that you would imagine. Okay, health call to action. They go to the doctor and the doctor tells them, if you don't lose weight, you're going to die. Okay, I had some of that. I had some of that occur because remember, I managed a lot of physicians. And these physicians were in specific categories where they were working in a fee-for-service model where they really did give a care about their patients. And me being someone that was managing them on sort of the admin side, they cared about me. And they did tell me, Thomas, you're pre-diabetic. Thomas, you're hypertensive. Thomas, you're overweight. All as a result of gaining weight very fast and becoming very unhealthy and very sedentary very fast. Okay, so I had that, but that didn't affect me. Why is that? Because call to actions like that are only going to affect extrinsically motivated people. I was never extrinsically motivated, ever. Okay, so think about it like this. If you're someone that always had the drive, okay, I'll give you an example here, just, just makes sense. The football player, okay? The football player that always had drive, but then for whatever reason, they have kids, life goes on, they gain a bunch of weight and they just get out of shape and they don't, I don't know what happened. Okay, they had intrinsic drive, okay? But then what ended up happening is they lost that intrinsic drive just through, I don't know, distraction, okay? So that intrinsic drive that I had always carried me on. I was never affected by my surroundings. This has worked in my favor and to my detriment. It works in my favor because I could bulldoze through anything and not really be affected by negative stuff around me. Sure, I can get stressed out and sure it can affect my eating habits, but it really didn't affect me if my world was chaos, okay? However, in that same vein, it also makes it so that I cannot see the self-destruction that is occurring internally because I'm so focused, okay? So that's the first person. Some people are gonna see that and they're just gonna, their doctor's gonna tell them they need to lose weight. They need, they'll just do it, okay? That is their call to action. Um, I think dealing with terminal illness, stuff like that is a different category because I think that goes into people's like real subconscious, deeply rooted stuff. Okay? The second kind of person is the person that's more like me. Okay, the intrinsically motivated person that has to get motivated internally. It didn't matter who would really tell me I needed to lose weight. If I wasn't there mentally to actually accept that, then maybe that's, it just doesn't matter, right? If I wasn't at the point in my brain where someone could come to me and actually give me insight and actually resonate with me, it would be absolute lip service, okay? It's kind of like, have you ever heard a word for the first time? And then all of a sudden, after you hear that word, you hear it in conversation in the subsequent months pretty frequently. It's that same way. Once you occur, or something occurs to you, then all of a sudden you're open to the people telling you what's up. And all of a sudden you can make a change. So I don't know if you've felt that way before, but hopefully this video can help you look inside yourself to see that. Maybe you do need to make a change. Maybe you are making interesting decisions that are affecting you negatively and affecting your family. And now you're open to other people bringing it in. Maybe I'm that other person that's bringing it your way. Anyhow, I digress. The third person is the kind of person that I think people would typically put me in a category of but I'm not, I'm more that second person. This is the systemized person, the person that is much more pragmatic and really needs to have an analytical sort of data-driven approach to things, okay? They don't really think extrinsically, they don't think intrinsically, they think data, they think analytical, okay? They look at a scale, they see a number, and they see that's wrong, and they quantify it and they measure it based on what they see in documentation, in literature, on the internet, whatever. It's a little bit of a tougher one to describe, but in my analysis with lots of different people, the hundreds of thousands of people that I've communicated with over the years in terms of these categories, those are the three that I put them with. And I encourage you to figure out which category you're in so that you can harness the motivation to make a change the either way, okay? And you first have to understand why you gained weight before you can understand how to lose weight. 
Okay, because one method of losing weight is not going to be the same for others. Now, I could tell you till I'm blue in the face biochemical ways to affect your body positively with fat adaptation and fasting and this and that and that and this, but the reality is there are things that are gonna resonate with you mentally more than others. And I will be the first to tell you that there is more than one way to do this, okay? The reason that I lean to intermittent fasting more than anything is because it is simple. I know I make it complicated sometimes, but it's simple. You can take fasting and you can apply it to any dietary pattern. Okay, keto, vegan, paleo, whatever. Plug it in with a fasting timing system. Fasting is just a timing system and it works for everybody. I've done fasting in so many different categories. The point is, this video is telling you what prompted me to lose weight. It was reflection. And it was reflection in an entirely different category. So open your mind, find that reflection with yourself and that will open up a whole different series of conversations that you can have with people and hopefully a whole different way that you can understand the videos on my channel. I really do appreciate you being here to watch this video and I know it's simple and it's kind of a creepy area because I'm just in my random little studio downstairs, but I hope that it helps pave the way and please, please, please don't forget to check out Noosh Foods down below in the description just because they're such a huge help to this channel and I hope that they can help you. As always, I'll see you tomorrow.